Hey, hello everybody. I'm back. Um, I'm gonna bring you guys to work with me today. I haven't been posting because I did transition into a new job. I had to get pediatric experience in order to get into the radiology program, which I did. So I start radiology school on May 8th. I just wanna say I am very proud of myself because it was a long journey and it was very hard. So that's why I have not been posting because I have been doing a lot. And then also I have a business doing lashes as well. So it's like, I literally work seven days a week. So please don't kill me because I don't pose like I'm very new to this. I just want to tell everybody, you know, I appreciate all the comments, the feedback. Everything has been taken into consideration. But yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and get ready for work. <music> So here I'm just showing you guys the phlebotomy room. This is where we keep our phlebotomy cards. This is where we keep our lab coats. We have our own cubbies here, as you can see with our name. This is where um, we also pick up our handheld for the day. And this is the room we stop in to get started. So this right here is where we stock every day. Um, these are all the things that are on our cart. And I'm just gonna open this up. So right here, we have our red tubes, 4ml and 6ml, and then we have our gold SST, our gold SST, sorry. Um, those are 3.5, and then we have our larger SSTs. Um, that's for outpatient. Um, that's if we're sending that out, like a send out to Quest or LabCorp. And then we just have the short draw 2ml lithium heparin the 4 ml um lithium heparin and then these right here are our sodium heparins and then these are our lithium heparins for the babies and you know if we collect it in a, in a syringe or things like that we just put it in here and then we have our short draw edta um that's the 2 ml and then we have our 4 ml EDTA. And then just like up here, we have our short draw EDTA. Then down here, you see we have our coax, we have our 1.8 um, blue citrate, and then we have our 2.7 blue citrate. Then we have our micro um, blue citrate. These are the same as this one and that one. Down here we have some gray tops. Right here we have our trace element, um, metal free, um, free EDTA. And then we have our royal blue EDTA K2. Um, and then right here, these are for, I guess like to check infections. Um, it's a 8.5, the same as the SST. Um, I would say it's just like blood cultures to check for infection. And then over here in this cabinet, we just have some more supplies. Um, we just have some cream. We have some panties. This is just some numbing spray and that's the numbing cream. Right here we have our gauze. We have our alcohol. We have our band-aids. We have some tourniquets. We have the foot lancets for the babies. We have the finger sticks. And right here, these are capillary tubes. Um, you would do a finger stick and then when the drop of blood comes out, you would just fill the tube up. Um, tissue, we have some more blood culture bottles. We have heel warmers. And then we also have sweeties. These right here are for like when we have babies and they have to get stuck with needles or stuck period and they're crying. This is nothing but literally just sugar water and it just calms them down. So yeah, um, we have, these are for um, the heparin syringes. We have some hats for when, um, when we have to collect urine samples here in outpatient um they just attach this to the toilet and then you just pour it into the cup here are just bags that you place on the babies to catch the urine 
and then right here oh yeah also before that before i put in the bag on the baby to catch the urine you do have to use one of these wipes to just go ahead and clean everything off correctly so it can stick and then right here we have oops the chlora prep which you used before the blood culture okay you guys so right now i'm just getting ready to head into a patient's room i'm gonna go go ahead and get my needle tourniquet everything ready so as soon as i walk in the room i can scan the patient's wristband get the blood and get out um i just like to be in and out of patient rooms just so you know not to take up their time because patients are there to heal not to be bothered different precautions that they put outside of patients rooms um, it just tells you what you need before entering the room As you see the white paper and blue paper on the previous slide um, I'm getting dressed up to go into this room I have to have like an N95 gown gloves um, I have to have two hairnets because the patient had lice and the spray that you see me showing you guys that's some lice prevention spray you just spray it on your neck just once just to make sure you know for extra precaution that lice doesn't get on you um, this was a really sick patient so I had to dress out completely like head to toe for you guys because I've seen like a lot of comments a lot of questions pros and cons of working in pediatrics it's very slow pace you're encouraged not to rush slow it down it's fairly okay but the thing is um, we have traumas and then we have like sticks in the ED that nurses can't get or maybe day surgery I mean little things here and there but that's about it also the parents people's biggest misconception is oh working with kids is so hard you know they cry they do this they do that but in reality the kids aren't the problem it's the parents that you have to deal with just think about those overbearing parents the parents like if their kid gets a scratch and the world is over just think about that the parent may get upset if you don't get it the first time and you have to do it again that's when they'll say oh um you know have someone else come in you can't get it like it'll just be like a whole situation some parents cry and believe it or not the energy that the parent gives off like is giving off to the child and it's reflecting off the child I'm not saying like that's the main reason but like just think about a kid if a kid see their mom burst out in tears they're probably gonna burst out in tears it's just good to educate the parent just to stay calm and if they can't handle it then maybe they should just step out of the room finger sticks and heel sticks it's not just like a regular stick um we do not straight stick we do not use straight needles at all here in the hospital for heel sticks i'm not gonna lie like i was not the best at heel sticks like pku's and things like that I would, I would get so frustrated, like I would be like, oh my god, like this heel stick, like it's frustrating me. It took time, um, some people did 
try to show me how to do it but like I always say you have to figure it out on your own you have to find out what works best for you what I like to do with the heel stitch I don't care if the foot is already warm I don't care if it's cold I always put a heel warmer on their foot when I'm doing it because you know the warmer it is the faster it's gonna flow and the bigger the drops this, this right here this right here is the device you're gonna use for a heel stick so you just open it boom then you're gonna take this remove it just pretend that this is like the heel of the baby's foot like you're gonna get a good grab make sure it's tight you're gonna press firmly snap like the heel warmer these purple um edtas for finger and heel sticks they do clot it's not like the regular purple tube these will clot a lot faster so a trick that i like to do the heel warmer that i use on them I'll take it and I'll wrap it around. I'll put the label with patient's information on there, wrap it around, send it off. That's been helping me a lot with preventing these getting clots. These, if they get clots or anything like that, it really doesn't matter because, you know, green, you have to spin it down. Finger sticks is basically gonna be the same thing. This right here is the lancet for finger sticks. All you gotta do is twist the top, pop. Take an alcohol pad, blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna really do it, but let's see. You take it and you hear a click. And that's when you milk it out. And also, I also wanna say, when you're doing finger sticks and heel sticks, um, don't just keep, keep, keep doing it. Like you have to milk it, get the blood, let it go. Do it again, drop, let it go. That goes for finger sticks and heel sticks. I don't know what it is about that method, but I really do like it. The 23 gauge butterfly needle this is what we mainly use here the only time we use a 21 is if you have an order and it says use a 21 gauge needle but i do like these a lot these are my favorite you do have some 25 gauge needles for you know really really small veins probably like babies in the NICU and stuff hey for kids like under four I use a syringe for them. I'm gonna show you how to attach the syringe. So you're gonna open it. Go ahead and take this off. This part right here. Unscrew it. Take syringe. Five ml syringe. Take that. Split it. All you have to do is twist it. Pump it a few times and you're ready to go. It kind of gets complicated like when you have to do blood cultures or if they do need a lot of labs. A trick for um, reattaching a new syringe is you want to pinch it at the bottom, untwist, set to the side. It has to stay pinched the whole time until this one is attached. You're going to twist boom and it's ready to go just keep flowing not only is this good for kids four and under it's also good for adults um maybe if they have like a quantifarin because a quantifarin you have to be very accurate you can't just put it through the vacuum container and just feel 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 it has to be at a certain point so i say this again i don't have my mha certification at all i only have experience y'all have to be careful about what you're applying for if it says like nha certification required then it's required but if it says preferred they do prefer it but if you don't have it then the experience is okay you do need to have your bls which is your cpr certification you do have to maintain it yourself i believe it's like every two years phlebotomy can open up 
lots of doors for you. Um, for instance, like to get into my radiology program, they asked me in my um, program being interview if I had experience with needle sticks and that came in handy because now I have pediatric, I have um, teenage, young adult, middle age, um, geriatric, like I have needle stick experience across the board and that's really a really big deal. Even in nursing, like some nurses have to stick. So this job is like a really good stepping stone. It's a really good stepping stone no matter what you do. Even like if you want to become medical assistant, you have to do phlebotomy. CNA, I don't think you have to do phlebotomy like that. Patient care tech, some places do have to um, have some type of phlebotomy skill so I really do think phlebotomy is like one of the basics that's why I think like this is a really good career really good stepping stone and it's going to help you get into the career that you want and who doesn't want that so um how to cope with nights um I am on night shift I work 2 p.m to 10 30 p.m so my shift honestly like it's really really slow get off at 10 30 get home by like 11 something shower and i'll probably be in bed by like 1 30 2 a.m get my eight hours of sleep and it's like i still get to sleep in you're gonna be thrown into a new environment it's hard it's very frustrating it's very challenging but i'm the type of person who does like a challenge so it makes me stronger, you know? So, I was literally, like, I had no pediatric experience when I started. Me being thrown out there and having to figure it out, it made me stronger. And it made me show them, like, yeah, like, I can do it too. And also, I want to tell y'all, like, when y'all are at these jobs and you guys see, like, older people, you know, working the computer, working the system, working the handheld, trust and believe, do not let it overwhelm you. Don't get discouraged. Don't um, feel overwhelmed. If you see these older people and you see them working the system, trust and believe, you can get it. Like, we're younger, so we have an advantage. Not saying there's anything wrong with the older crowd. I love y'all, but I'm just saying, don't get, don't get frustrated. Because if they're working that system, best believe you can too. What I say is, age does not have a limit on phlebotomy. I do think like the younger you start out, the better. I wish I could go back to when I was like fresh out of high school and started this. I probably would be way more ahead in life than now, but you know, it's life, things happen. So yes, yeah. you know, you do have to work with your hands a lot because you may be stretching the skin, you may be holding somebody, right? The, you, the main thing that you use are your eyes and your hands. So if you don't have any problems with your eyes and your hands, I say go for it. Um, if you wear glasses, that's okay too. Just make sure that you don't like falling off of your face if you're like bending down and things like that. Just make sure you have some good glasses that stay on you. Um, math, I know somebody in the last video um, left a comment asking about um, does it require math? Maybe just like basic math, like nothing too much. Um, the only math I have to do because the newborn babies, um, their weight, with their weight, you can only draw a certain amount of blood and I'm gonna show you. Um, this is the amount of blood that we have to draw from the baby based on their weight and we cannot go over that. If we do go over, we can only do it with the doctor's permission, but this is very important because these babies can pass out and may need a blood transfusion. This goes for LabCorp, Quest, everywhere. You cannot draw over the baby's weight. If you do, it's a problem. Also, I'm gonna attach a picture of my friend's phlebotomy school. You guys have been asking for that as well. Um, if you do need a NHA certification, you can get it through her. She is very informative, very professional, and also this is a black owned business, so I'm gonna support my sis. So yeah, you guys hit her up. Um, and when you do hit her up, make sure she knows that I sent you guys because we just want to make sure that this information gets out there to everybody. <laughs> 
okay so now i'm going to go over what is on my card this is my phlebotomy card i know it looks different from the last phlebotomy card i showed you guys i am at a new hospital so you know there are going to be different processes for different facilities so this is how they do things first off we are going to start with the tourniquets we have some smaller tourniquets these are like for newborn babies or like really small kids with small arms we have some regular tourniquets um these are our specimen bags right here we have just um the maximum draw sheet um for the patient and then we have like some uh schedules for morning rounds we just like to keep that handy on the cart then right here we have some gauze um we have some band-aids alcohol swaps not swabs pads um we have five ml and three ml syringes these are mainly used for either blood cultures um like newborn babies or kids for and under when we have to draw their blood we just don't put the needle in a vacuum tainer and do it you know that's gonna hurt their veins and it's gonna make their veins collapse right here we have some 20 gauge needles we have our tubes that we use um we have our gloves um this right here is just like a little trash compartment um we like to keep there um then down here we have our micro containers um like i told you guys these are like for finger sticks or heel sticks or if we collect a little bit of blood in the syringe we can also put it in here depending on the test um we have the micro blue top um, these are our litter stick and heel stick devices. This right here, these came off of these needles at the end of the shift. You basically just go ahead and just toss those. And then at the bottom, um, we just have some extra tubes just in case if we run out on the top. We have um, the chloroprep sticks for the blood cultures, which are right there. We have some ions, calcium, heparin, syringes, um, heel warmers, transfers. Like I told you guys, these are for when we need to collect blood in a syringe and put it into into a vial. So this is what this is used for and blood culture. And up here, we just have another one from here. about it for the phlebotomy card so here i'm just showing you guys how to um put a blood culture in the, in the bottle the right way i already collected the blood um with a syringe in outpatient so here you just see me having the two syringes i'm just gonna connect a transfer device onto the syringe um, i'm gonna clean the top of the bottle off with alcohol just to make sure there's no contamination and that's about it and then after that i'm gonna go ahead and put the patient information on there and send it straight to the lab to give you guys a glimpse of inside the patient rooms this is what it looks like this is the setup and just to let you know sometimes you will have questionable odors when you walk into these rooms just trying to give you guys a glimpse and a heads up so earlier in the video i did talk about syringes and i also talked about 
um, a quantiferin test. This right here is the quantiferin. I basically collected two syringes of blood um, and I'm just precisely putting the blood into the vial, filling it up to the line, but not over the line. This has to be very precise. If it's not precise, then the lab will reject it because the test has to be accurate and the draw has to be accurate as well. So I just wanted to show you guys in real time um, what a quantiferin test is like. people around you trying to motivate you and trying to help you and trying to give you words of encouragement you have to give that back to yourself and that's what I had to do so I had to give myself a pep talk and, and do what I had to do you know you have to be there for yourself don't worry about your co-workers or anybody else being here for you be here for yourself and just worry about yourself that's all that matters thank you guys for watching my video we do appreciate each and every one of you if you're watching this just please press subscribe please press like leave a comment letting me know that you're here i do try to respond to everybody that's one thing that i can honestly say so yeah that's pretty much it um i hope you guys found my video informative um, and that's it for the video guys i know it was long overdue but I made it and I just want to say thank you for the support once again please comment please like please subscribe please share my video to other people wondering about what phlebotomy is all about and let's chat in the comments I try to respond to everybody I love all of you guys and you guys have a good day okay